as a lot of positive things yes. that happen in the community. So you see hope in a community. Oh, I do, yeah. Welcome to Face Chicago. I'm Debbie Frazier, and we are on part two of our ministry tour with Heart for the City. And Dr. John Feuder is with me today. John, thank hey, you Debbie. for being here. There's crime and violence in most all major cities. Why can people not coexist here? Well, I think, Deb, that goes back to, uh, unfortunately, um, that the practices of what flipped a lot of Chicago's neighborhoods back in the day historically from white to black to brown uh, have often um, been driven by a, a deep um, racial overlay of, I, I guess I want to say racial preference, uh, a, a sense of people being f f treated as less than worthy, equal, Practices that did not enable uh, people to gain access to be able to buy a home in certain neighborhoods. The infamous Black Belt community where African Americans were marginalized in certain sections of Chicago. Neighborhoods where people know that that is primarily a Latino community, it's primarily an African American. Um, that's not unique to other cities per se in this nation, but if ever there was a city that, that um, un unfortunately was, <laughs> is known for those kind of practices, it really <laughs> it is, is Chicago. And, and okay. I think the ache for us as Christ followers is there, I don't know if there's ever been fully repenting of that. Okay. Because in some respects, churches were complicit. Churches that white flight is called that left neighborhoods and, and, and relocated in more resource communities. And um, those left behind still carry a lot of baggage. Uh, even cr Christians still, there's yeah. a lot of drama in that regard. Part of what we're trying to do is to put that stuff out there and really acknowledge, God, we have we have not lived as your church. Ah, and uh, we need you to break our hearts around that. Mm -hmm. And we need to, in a sense, reestablish what it really means to be a Christian in these communities again and care for people. We're on the rooftop of Park Community Church right now. What is so significant about this location? This mm -hmm. community uh, what was simply known as Cabrini back in the day, near north is the official neighborhood. And it was a place where there was a lot of high rise, low income housing projects. All those buildings are torn down. I was gonna say, that's not so the case see, as I look no, around. This is all that, new development. Yeah, there's a, these are beautiful quarter, half a million dollar townhouses now that were built. And literally surrounding Parks building uh, are all new units now. Now there are still pockets of need around us, Debbie. There are still what are called the rows, the row houses, where there are still uh, and in and, and, and another low-income apartment unit called the Marshall Field Homes, there would still be several thousand under-resourced wow. families in this community, but you wouldn't see that now. They're kind of tucked and hidden away. Yeah. So it's kind of a mixed bag. I think the learn for the church, for parks specifically, is to bridge both of those worlds, to care for the more resource, to figure out ways to get into conversation, but not to neglect those around us that still struggle uh, materially. We're gonna learn about other ministries, but tell us about yours, Heart for the City. In essence, what Heart for the City does is helps churches engage their community by, yes. by knowing it, listening to its needs, learning from it, studying different um, socioeconomic um, aspects that are, are things that cause neighborhoods to struggle culturally, and then apply scripture to do that. And, and a lot of it was born in, in God doing that in my own heart and life, giving uh, me a heart for Chicago, but realizing that Ultimately, because our city is in need, we respond as the church, but it's deeper than that. God's great intent is for the church to really be all that it can be in communities of need. And so it's training, it's mobilizing, it's helping Christ followers understand their neighborhood, yes. respond to it, and, and God willing, see churches formed around that. That's a lot of what we try to do. Well, there's a great need here, so let's get started. Amen, right. let's do it. When we return, we'll visit the west side, best side of Chicago, stay with us. Welcome back. We pick up on our travels through Humboldt Park to East Garfield Park. Humboldt Park really changed over the last decade. It has, yeah. So this is a community that historically um, has a, a lot of roots in the Latino community. In fact, it's where we're heading south right now and then a little bit farther east. 
We're going to be crossing a street called Division in a couple moments, and it is the gateway into the Puerto Rican community. There'll be the Puerto Rican flags indicating the fact that this is sort of um, their neighborhood. Their area. East Garfield Park, it is one of the poorest neighborhoods in the city, isn't it? It is, unfortunately, and one of the more violent. Um, a lot of the shootings have taken place in East Garfield Park here. We're here with Pastor Johnny Miller of Mount Vernon Baptist Church, and I am so excited. Tell us about the center we're in front of, the JLM Center. Yeah, here we've been here uh, a little over 10 years now uh, that we built this facility from the ground. It's a uh, 40,000 square feet facility, an opportunity to serve a community, and uh, we're just excited about what the Lord is allowing us to do with the community. We have a gymnasium. We have the re-engagement center on the top floor. And that is to help students uh, Who drop education. out of school education, get them aware, get education going on. And so the Lord has blessed us to be able to minister, uh, not just on Sunday, but every day. There you go. It's a holistic gospel, isn't it, brother? Holistic gospel. Where, where you're, you're, you're modeling a lot of the values of what it is to follow Jesus, mind, body, heart, soul. That's it, totally. Why totally. is that necessary here in this specific area? Oh, it's so necessary because people have been wounded, people have been hurt, the fear is, is all around. And Pastor, I know you've done far too many funerals than an average pastor in our city. Talk a little bit too about, and we want to ultimately pray about that for you, but Thank you so much. the weight yeah, of that. Heartbreaking, yeah. Too many uh, funerals and especially of young people and especially of uh, senseless killing at 7, 13, 20, 25, 30 years old through gang violence. And so we've had many, many of those funerals with an opportunity to console families. Because the community you serve is full of violence. It is, it is. A lot, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of violence is, is going on, and all the time that is uh, uh, magnified above because in the midst of these community, mm -hmm. having this place bring together a lot of people, it also shows that there's a lot of positive things yes. that happen in the community. So you see hope in a community. Oh, I do. Yeah. Do people here have a strong sense of identity? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, 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 and that's because we, we, we trust God and we believe that in spite of what happened. Uh, that, that we're still going to come out of this and we're going to be able to make a deposit that's going to help change lives. I'm looking out at uh, three and four generation wow. babies that are Christians oh. who are now in college, who have a good job, have their own family. And so they're all yeah. over the country Amen. doing some great Amen. things. Right. Oftentimes, when Debbie asks you that question, Pastor, and someone would think, oh, he's going to say, no, they have a very poor sense of identity. But that's, no, not, that's not true. That's not true. And, and, yeah. and we need to reiterate that. Yeah that there is an extraordinary sense of hope and hopefulness growing. Yeah. And uh, God's using you to be a big part of that, brother. Well, I pray that God would uh, just let us continue and uh, to keep the, uh, keep the light burning, keep the, keep the doors open so that we can keep doing His work. So what are the greatest needs of this community? Well, this community need a faith lift. And, and that, 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 that would come through economic development. Too many vacant lots that call people to be depressed, to drive through and not see businesses, not see housing, proper housing. And so we, we, we're looking to be able to do some development in our community, having the people to have jobs, have an opportunity yeah. to live there and to help do that development even themselves. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy, Appreciate it. If the Lord tarries, I believe, you know, we could come back 10, 20 years from now and still see Pastor Miller hard at it, you know. And I, I love him for that. I, I love anybody who's done one thing that long. There's, there's, that's a thick skin and a soft heart. When we come back, we're visiting Pastor Phil Jackson at the Firehouse Community Arts Center. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We visited some of the most dangerous sections of the city, but we also found a great resilience among Christian leaders like Phil Jackson of the Firehouse Community Arts Center. We're getting to the point as we go west that we're getting farther away from city center now, where in near proximate neighborhoods to the downtown are the ones that typically get a little bit more resources. So we're kind of moving away from that now. And, and we're in North London. We are. We're just okay. entering North London, but we're going to celebrate Pastor Phil Jackson. Is that where we're headed? Yes, Tell us where about we're headed. Pastor Phil. And uh, the firehouse, Pastor Phil, has this building here, wasn't you can see it, City of Chicago Fire Department, 
it's it's been converted into a church and uh, Pastor Phil is pouring into this neighborhood part of the the, the broader Lawndale Community Church and uh, there is much good happening yeah. through this ministry so we're gonna see Pastor All right, Phil. Let's go talk to Pastor Phil. So Pastor Phil we were just surrounded by sirens for me that was a little unusual to have that many sirens but you seemed to be to understand it very well is that usual? Well I'm not comfortable with it I'm just familiar with it and right. being familiar uh, with it to the degree that let me find the root cause of what's going on not just to write it off like oh there they go you know right. uh, but making sure that uh, if we have some involvement with the guys that we're working with that we can advocate or we could we could check in to see who's yeah. what's happening yeah but that's why you're here right 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 to serve the Lord in this context to be salt and light in in, in, in tough uh, areas you know um, and to really uh, have the light shine hard as best we can. It's close to home though, isn't it, Phil? Because I know recently there was a shooting, you were just proximity to it, weren't you? Coming out from the meeting with the guys on the sidewalk right in front of the Lawndale Community Church. Yeah, yeah, it was a... Talk, talk just a little bit about, because you've been pouring into the lives of these men. Yeah, yeah, so I've, I've been in this neighborhood 24 years and I, uh, been in ministry 30 and um, walk with these guys in a lot of different ways. And so we had just taken some guys to, a mentoring meeting and took them to go get something to eat and had a great session with them. And uh, one of the guys had just told his mom, I'm, this is the day I'm finally doing something positive with my life. And um, as he did that, he uh, went with us and went with the mentor and then he ended up uh, going to the store and then going back to bring the stuff he got from the store to another guy right in London Community Church. And a car rolled up on him behind him and shot him with an AK-47 uh, four times, you know. And he wasn't the target. He looked like somebody was a part of the target. But um, these guys were just a few, about a, less than a half a mile away in their area, their territory. And they were looking for somebody um, who they thought was this guy. So, and they just sent a ripple into a lot of situations that we've tried to advocate for and to try to, you know, um, the, the brevity of life or the value of life um, when you're younger, um, is is uh, younger in the city and the complexities of things oftentimes when it's life versus your reputation or life versus your life or life versus your money um, then l the value of life is decreased you know yeah tell us about this area this Lawndale North Lawndale is beautiful it's a great place man it's a great place only about maybe yeah. 2% of the people in Lawndale are yeah. doing horrible, crazy yeah. things. Yeah. 98, 97% of people trying to go to school That's every really day. That's really important to reiterate that, isn't it, brother? It is, it is. Yeah. When you can only, yeah. I mean, we have a bunch of churches in here to do a lot of work, yeah. do a so lot of great true. work and advocacy work and stuff that nobody even writes about, nobody even knows. But the value of what people are doing when it comes to that is not necessarily seen, right? And, um, but what is seen is what was been happening on 16th and Ridgeway. And then, there's a lot of people who are tired in London, tired of the shootings and tired of the stuff because it, it, it ebbs and flows at times. And a you know, younger generation begins to try to pass the mantle, grab the mantle, or if you will, or baton and create more hectic stuff. Um, since we've been doing what we've been doing, people have said um, a lot of violence has decreased in North London. Tell us what you are doing at yeah. your church. So we run the Firehouse Community Arts Center, which is our um, effort to transform the lives of youth and young adults uh, in the arts within a faith community where we can exemplify Christ. We have this whole thing, less definition of the gospel, more demonstration. Let us be what Christ called us to be and let that in of itself bring salvation to those who are serving. And so we have six different disciplines in the Firehouse. We have technology, we have culinary arts, audio engineering, visual arts, uh, dance, and fashion. And three of those are gonna be uh, social enterprises where we're, we're gonna have our firehouse catering, we're gonna do networking with people's computers, and we're gonna have fashion where we make prom dresses or suits and things like that for people. Yeah. But it'll be done by young people from this neighborhood. What drives kids to join gangs? Um, the disparity of what's around them. Um, the disparity meaning economic disparity, uh, safety disparity, the, the reality that um, I'm, I live on Abers, I'm trying to go to school every day, but there's a crew of guys who think I'm with so-and-so, let me be a part of this crew so I can I can be safe. Now, used to be a time where there was a, a chief of a gang and that chief dominated and, and, and ruled the guys. Uh, we had certain situations with guys, we'd come to the chief and be like, have so-and-so stop burning the cars down, and they would stop. Have so-and-so stop breaking into houses. And they would stop. Not that we want anybody breaking into homes, but there was an order. 
and now there's no order. Uh, those guys have been arrested, those guys have been in jail, so the younger guys are just oftentimes running a bandit. And, um, and so it's all fractioned out now, and so it used to be, uh, even though it's reckless, the gang influence, uh, it used to have some order to it. So there's a lot of uh, things that, that create that, but... Um, but you don't think anyone is hopeless? No one is hopeless, no. No one is hopeless. Yeah. That was Big Reach right there. He used to be a three-star general elite who would run this neighborhood forever, but now he's working with kids, loves the Lord, and reaching guys. So, you know, <laughs> so there's no, there's no, Praise it, God, it, it is about, it is, it's all good. It is about well, a Nothing's long, hopeless. Nothing, then. right. Yeah. It is about, yeah. it is about, uh, I mean, he got some crazy stories too. He, <laughs> it's about a long walk in the same direction. I love wow. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you Thank for you. being with us. Appreciate that. You know, when we stood with Pastor Phil there, I think we were struck by the number of sirens coming by both fire and ambulance police and realizing that a shooting had gone down in the neighborhood literally just then just then while we were there nearby up next we get a taste of how lou malnati's is serving londale community lou malnati's pizza is a staple of chicago cuisine their restaurant in the Lawndale community was started to help the local economy. We talked with Lou Malnati's Chief Operating Officer, Jim D'Angelo, about the motivation behind establishing this store. Tell us about the building behind us. So the building behind us is the Lou Malnati's Pizzeria. We opened it up around 20 years ago and it was a local grocery store beforehand and there's a great story behind how Tell us about that story. Yeah, so our owners, Mark and Rick Milnati, had met Coach, who's the pastor here at Lawndale Community Church, uh, and they had a crazy idea that we should open a pizzeria here in Lawndale because uh -huh. there were no sit-down restaurants at the time. And the concept or the idea behind it was it's a great opportunity to bring back economic revival to the neighborhood, create jobs, create a place for the community to go and sit down and, and have pizza. And um, it really um, was a great idea, and, um, but it had its challenges along the way and didn't quite go the way we thought it was going to go initially. How, how has it gone differently than what you <laughs> thought it would go? We had to kind of find a new purpose. We've really partnered with the church around creating a work program for men who are trying to get their lives back together. So and that's who you hire? Some were either incarcerated, some were living on the streets, some were getting off of drugs, you know, and decided they were going to turn their lives around. They became part of the program. Um, and part of the program, along with rehab, was to start to work on their work skills yeah. also. So. so has that been challenging, rewarding? What uh, mostly rewarding. It's had its disappointments. Um, it's funny, I'd say, you know, <laughs> I'd say my heart got broken a few times in the yeah. first time because yeah. I kind of hadn't been exposed to that, and so to yeah. see somebody rise and do well yeah. and then fall um, was hard, you know, yeah. and I would say took it personal in a sense. Sure. Um, sure. And, and, you know, I came to, um, when we opened, I came thinking I was going to give and give and give and help, and it's amazing. I'm, I'm not amazed by it anymore, but how often I've been the recipient or the receiver more than I've been the giver. I was not saved at the time when I came. Wow, wow. And, uh, Is that right? Came to Christ during this? Came to Christ during this, and this was a big part of it, amongst other things, but this was a big part. Wow. Oh, that is awesome. And one of the I guys know that. invited wow. me to come to Bible study, and I said no for about 10, 10 offers, you know, yeah, down the yeah, road. Yeah. I was the suburban white kid came uh -huh, to this neighborhood, uh -huh. played basketball on Monday, and did a Bible study. And I came for three straight years and uh, and oh. came to Christ through the process. So, Praise yeah. God. That oh, is that's amazing. What yeah. a testimony. A so, and what a gift. Like I said, you come to a neighborhood that needs economic revival and God works in such mysterious ways that it's been the greatest gift back to me and my family. I then, love uh, that. Has so possibly um, <clears throat> your change of heart changed how you view the community? I can't see myself not being a part of this, even though my roles changed over the you know, 20 years we've been open, is um, there's something about like allowing people, or I didn't say allowing, but treating people with dignity. Everybody yeah. deserves to be treated with dignity, very, which I think is a yeah. very Christ-like principle. Yeah. And um, and I could connect with guys even though I was intimidated or foreign to the environment. And it came back to me. And so that's where we had connection, even with gentlemen who'd been incarcerated or, yeah. you know, We'd lived very different lives, but what I got to see was how very similar we were in a lot of ways too.
How has this area improved since you opened the store? So there's so many things as you look and you come up and down and the neighborhood just looks different. It looks like it's revived too. So, um, you guys were kind of the genesis of that, weren't you? The forerunner. We were, yeah, we were part of it. You know, I mean, blazed a trail. Kind yeah, of. and it took some faith. You know, sure. honestly, I mean, you know, we we wound up yeah. changing people's lives. I yeah. mean, Whitney Young, when they won the state yeah. championship, had a place to come in their neighborhood and celebrate. Never had had a place to come yeah. and celebrate uh, before. That's you good. know, yeah, that's kids good. celebrating birthday parties yeah. in their neighborhood. You yeah. know, kind of things. So, yeah. Um, yeah. giving jobs to, to people, and you know. Again, and again, not that those didn't have their bumps along the way. Of course they did. And not everybody was a success, quote unquote, success story. Um, and the financial model is not a success story, but it's a success. It's it a is. success in the Big way time. it's touched lives and yeah. changed lives, myself included, yeah, obviously. I love that. So. Yeah, Thanks great. for being with us. Thank Thanks, you. Jim. Thanks for having it's me. It's encouraging. Yeah. And I understand before we leave, I get to enjoy a delicious pizza that I will not forget. <laughs> It's unforgettable. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. So. Well, let's go. Let's, All right. do it. let's do it. Let's dive. Thanks for watching. So glad you joined us today for part two of our tour. And Doc, so appreciative of all that you're doing. And thank you Pleasure. for taking us on this tour. You know, some people may feel moved to move yep. into the city of Chicago, sure. but yeah. others may not. Um, what can we do? Yeah, yeah. It, that, How do we get started? Yeah, I would say two things. Um, pray and get a copy of the prayer guide. Get it through Moody Publishers. And, and just simply say, God, change my heart as I start praying yes. into the needs of Chicago. Another thing, though, is you can partner with churches, ministries that are already serving the needs. The From ones anywhere. that we just saw on the tour. Yeah, yeah. And find ways to, to be more aware, to volunteer, to, to bring a youth group, to, to show up. One step toward the city can exactly. be from your very living room. So, so true. So. Join us next week when our ministry tour of Chicago's dynamic neighborhoods continues. Connect with us at Face Chicago. Email us, call us with your prayer needs, and check us out on Facebook. We'll see you again this time next week on Face Chicago.